Come on, Daddy. It's freezing outside. Just come on inside. It's going to be okay. How much uh, time do we have, assuming that we actually do this? Well, Mom is working late tonight, so there's plenty of time. Listen, you just take off your coat, and you get yourself into the right mood, and I'll unpack this stuff. Relax. shirt here. I, uh, washed it and ironed it. Oh, aren't you sweet? That's a big sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take that into him? Why don't you do it now? I don't think so. Oh, come on. Uh, you know, you really are both wonderful people. You just don't know each other. Give it a try. If you really think it'll work, I'll give it a shot. Okay, good. Good luck. I'll be here waiting. regular checkup and shot. And uh, excuse oh, me, good. you forgot to sign the insurance form. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll, I'll take him while you do that. Come here, Bucky. Hi. Oh, it's been sweet. What you got there? I missed you yeah, the other you. day when you were supposed to come on over. So that happen soon, and you can play with your trains. Well, that'll be nice. Got your shirt here. It's uh, clean, iron. Thanks. Thank you very much. So how you feeling? Feeling all right? Uh, didn't Vanessa tell you when she sent you in here? Look, Josh, I, I really don't care what you think about me. Why don't you cut Vanessa a little slack? All she wants is for the... All she wants is the Lewis stamp of approval. Yeah, what's wrong with that? She loves her family, but she ought to be able to live her own Let's life, don't you think? Do me so? a favor, okay? Stop telling me about my sister-in-law. I've known her for a long time. Is he, um... Is he having trouble still sleeping through the night and all? He's doing fine. Oh, yeah, because, you know, for a while there, he really wasn't able to... Yeah, no, but now he's doing good. He's doing fine now. Here you go. Here's your money. And how are things with you and Matt? Oh, they're fine as long as I remember that Matt's Matt. What is that supposed to mean? Well, you know, that Matt won't ever change. He never makes any plans or anything. He just plows right ahead regardless, you know. No, I don't. Because that's not been my experience with him that. at all. He, uh, he tried very hard, and I did too, to reason his way out of his feelings, but it didn't work. Well, I guess we're just lucky that the whole world doesn't run around just expressing their feelings and regardless of consequences, you know. Well, I don't know about that. Sometimes the consequences are pretty great. Like Peter. I was young. 
I thought that's what growing up is about, learning from your mistakes, not doing the same dumb thing twice. What's this about, Bridget? Are you afraid that I'm going to take your brother away from you, or do you think I'm going to hurt your brother? I wish that we could really just... You know, it's really nice talking to you. I've got to go now. Sorry. You don't have a lot of respect for your sister-in-law, do you? I have tremendous respect for Vanessa and love for her so much so that I don't want to see her get hurt. And sooner or later, I think that's what's going to happen with you. And if it doesn't, you're going to be... You're going to be real happy about it, aren't you? How'd it go? Willie, thank me for the shirt. Uh-huh, I see. I'm sorry. I... I thought maybe he was starting to come around. Yeah, I think he's gone from an eight to about a six on the Richter scale. Swell. Well, I saw your sister. She was just thrilled to death to see me. She obviously thinks I'm leading you down the primrose path to hell and back. Yeah, well, Josh thinks I'm gonna make you miserable. <laughs> You know how much time we spend worrying about these guys? Yeah, I do. Wish we could... I wish we could get away from all of them just for a little while. Maybe we can. What do you mean? W where are you going to be later? Home. I have some errands to do, and then uh, I'm just going to go home. i got something to take care of, and I might be talking to you later, okay? Okay. Reality check. Are we missing out? On a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity here? What? The mirror has been taking a very large chunk of circulation out of our flank ever since the fire. Now, it's not the quality of the story. It's just one story. Vanessa Lewis and her young lover. Mm. We don't print stuff like that. Yeah, but we are in the business of reporting on events that have significance to human beings. Now, what could be more significant or more human than sexual attraction, passion, love? That trash in the mirror has about as much to do with passion and love as, as the treatment the British royal family gets. Ah, see, now that is just the point I'm trying to make, because is the subject itself inherently sleazy, or is it the coverage it's been getting? You looking to jump on the bandwagon? I don't think Vanessa would appreciate your fine distinctions. I think Vanessa would appreciate an even-handed approach after this, and if we handled it, it wouldn't come off cheaply. It would be about the unlikely but passionate attachment of two rational adults who are shocked and surprised by their sudden explosive connection as it did everyone else around them, except that they had the imagination and the bravery not to deny it. This isn't exactly about Vanessa and the young man, is it? I love you for doing this, Chrissy. But it ain't gonna work. Dad. We were on the brink of having it all. And I blew it. We got a lot of help from Alexandra. Well, I'm gonna take great satisfaction in destroying her, and this time for good. Dad, I would like you to stop this, okay? Living well is the best revenge, remember? Now, either you can put your energy into taking revenge on Alexandra or getting Mom back. Which do you want? First, I'm going to get your mother back, if I can, and then I'm going to get some revenge. And then Alexander's going to get back at you, and it's going to start the whole circle all over and over again. Why don't you instead light the, can light the, the fire and make it just like it was the night of the snowstorm? I promise you, it's going to work. Who else could I possibly be talking about except Vanessa and Matt? Oh, don't tell me you thought... Come on, get off it, will you? My whole life doesn't revolve around you, you know? Oh, that reminds me. What's happened with old Raj? Is he out of the doghouse and back into yours? I took your advice, and I asked him for some time. Good for you. I screwed up. I hurt him. And I hurt you. Me? I have very thick skin. It takes a whole lot to get under mine. But don't keep me in suspense. Come on, tell me. Decide to put him out of his misery or what? I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I haven't decided. Do you 
You know what our problem is, Rith? We started at the end instead of the beginning. Well, Roger and I started way back at the beginning. And we have a long history together. History is a fraud agreed upon. Napoleon said that. I didn't. Can't we... What? Just be friends? Sure. We can go back to being whatever it was we were before we had a chance to be something else and blew it. Or maybe we didn't have a chance to become anything else at all. I don't know. But don't expect me to wish you well on your next foray into folly with Roger the Dodger because it would be hypocritical and uncharacteristic. Even if there had been no you and me against the world for five extraordinary minutes. Now, excuse me, I have work to do. All right, how about it? You got anything new on that fire story? Ah, I don't know. I mean, I'm still trying to make sense of what I do have. I've got... Sid's 911 calls, the location of the dumpster fires, the drug bust, the same night in the same area, the man in the red parker. Add it all together, what do you got? Who knows? I have no idea. I'm trying to tie it together. That's it. Good night. Night, Holly. Also got a little bit of information from an informant earlier. Doesn't bode well for Sid. Flatch? Excuse me? What did you say? Look, man, why don't I type up this information, okay, and we'll talk about it later. Sure thing, thanks. Nick? Hi, darling. Oh, hi, Alexander. I've been following your articles on the fire. They're excellent. Well, thank you very much. I'm really happy to see you. Are you? Yeah, I am. Uh, Lucy was afraid that you had been abducted. <laughs> uh, well, I forgot to tell her. It wasn't going to be it. Uh, darling, I hate to keep you from your work, but I thought you should know right away. Alan and I gave the presidency of Spaulding to your cousin Alan Michael today. I didn't expect to wake up and find you gone. Well, up <laughs> here. And I will stay as long as you want. You're making this really hard for me, Sid. Oh, uh, come on, Jilly. I have to take care of something, that's all. Would that something be the phone call you told me to forget ever happened? I can't say anymore. How would you feel if I told that to you? Well, I wouldn't like it, but I'd have to accept it. Let me tell you something, Sid. I am not the kind of woman who can be close to a man in bed and then keep her distance everywhere else. Either we're together or we're not. Now, I don't need to know every little move you make, but the important things, yes, the things that affect our lives, I need you to share those with me. I need you to trust me. Trust isn't the issue. Then what is? Sid, don't you get it? I am on your side. I want to help you, even if you are guilty of oh. something. Is that what you think? I think you're acting guilty. Well, maybe I am. Yeah, see, maybe I lied when I said I didn't start the Fifth Street Fire. Come off of it, sis. I was with you that night. I saw how upset you are, and I know that you were not faking it. Okay, well, the cops know I did leave the party at company between, what, 11, 15, and 12. Where'd you go? To see somebody. Who? And this somebody vouch for you, give you an alibi. They can't. Why not? Jilly. Jilly, you have every right to ask all these questions. I, it kills me that I can't answer them. But, baby, I promise you. I promise you that one day you will know it all. You'll know everything. Just as soon as I can tell it to you. Okay, Sid. We will do it your way for now. Thank you for just having faith in me. I must. 
Well, I guess that's what Alan Michael always wanted, right? Excuse me. You can't hear. Uh, I'll say hello to Fletcher until you're finished. Yeah. Go away, Alexander. You don't want to hear what I have to say. Oh. You're up to your old tricks I... again, aren't you? Even though you're messing with people like Roger Thorpe, innocent people are getting hurt in the spillover. I don't know what you're talking about. No? Well, Roger believes that you set him up to make it look like he cheated on Holly, and Holly believes it. You set a very nasty little trap for those two people, didn't you? Oh, come on. You know Holly would believe anything Roger told her. Well, anyway, all is well that ends well, since it seems as if they're going to be getting back together. Sorry to spoil your evening. Well, really, I couldn't care less. Oh, no, what really? They do. Well, you know what? I don't believe you. Because I think for the first time in Roger Thorpe's life, he actually told me the truth. Oh. Only question is, why did you want to hurt Holly? No, Fletch. I think the question is, why do you give everyone in the world the benefit of the doubt except me? I'm sorry. I bothered you. Uh, Nick, I'm gonna go on. Oh, no. So, I, I just thought you should know before we pick up the Wall Street Journal and read it. Yeah. You know, I guess what surprises me the most about it is that Alan Michael said that he was gonna cut off all ties to Spalding. <laughs> That's harder. Harder than it sounds like. Flex, where are you going? I'm going to a bar. I need a stiff drink. Are you okay? Ah, oh, yes, of course. With uh, Spalding in such capable hands, my brother moving back into the house. What more could I ask for? And you? I'm doing great. Oh, so I hear. So you hear? Where do you hear that from? Oh, come on, darling. I can't. Uh can't reveal so many sources. Bye. <laughs> sources. That's it. Okay. Where are you going? Well, it's not going to be exactly romantic if I'm here. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it. Well if you're not here, she'll accuse me of breaking and entering and call the police. Oh, dear. She will. She will. Listen, when Mom shows up and she sees the champagne and the candles and the flowers and you, just in the middle of all of it, adoringly waiting for her, her heart will melt. Oh, darling. Hi. Oh, dear. Well, H.B. and I were just discussing the menu for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I would prefer to eat something that wasn't last seen scampering about with its stomach six inches above the ground. <laughs> How about pasta primavera? Mm, sounds delicioso. That's one of them uh, yuppie inventions, ain't it? <laughs> They've been pastifying the country. Okay, okay, I'll go along with majority rule. Oh. Okay, okay, I better get my apron on. Oh, darling, yeah. darling. I'm sorry, but you seem a little down. You want to talk about it? No. Oh. But thank you for sticking by me right now. Oh, darling, really? And thank you for sticking by me. You too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I wouldn't have chosen the path you have chosen, but if that's what you want and it ain't breaking the law, I won't stand in your way. Good. Now, who's that? I don't know, but I'll find out. Hi. Hi. Come on in. Hey. Daddy and HP. When I pulled up, I noticed a... Oh. Well, we meet again, young man. Yes, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Chamberlain. Hi, Matt. How uh, are you? What were you saying as you came in? Well, I noticed a, a cab leaving when I pulled up. I was wondering who who got picked up. Nobody. Must have been turning around. Well, uh, why don't you stay for supper? I, I, I'm making pasta primavera. Ever heard of it? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. It's one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> but actually, I was hoping we could go out tonight. Oh, I'd like to, but I, I can't because I told the gentleman that I would be making supper for them. Oh, darling, of course you can go out. H.B. Uh, and I are going to scramble up some eggs for ourselves, aren't we, H.B.? Yeah, just what I had in mind. Uh -huh. Don't think of all the reasons why you can't just say yes. Come away with me. Come now, wait a minute. I have to get a coat or a bag or something. I hope you don't mind my letting Daddy and I didn't want him freezing on the stoop. Night, you too.
this isn't the way Chrissy promised it would go. You were supposed to be overwhelmed and fall into my arms. It's just amazing what we do to each other. What I do to you, you haven't done anything to me. I didn't believe you. I didn't trust you enough to know that it was Alexandra who was lying. And then I let everybody throw you out of the house at Christmas. You already apologized for those things. Do you forgive me? Yes. I forgive you anything. So what's it going to be, Hal? Do I stay or go? I love you too much to keep punishing both of us for something you didn't even do. Stairs. Didn't they stop you or anything? Well, I snuck by the man at the front desk when he wasn't looking. And then I climbed up the stairs to the place where it said to. Uh, but what about the nurse out here at the desk? Dad, I can be small sometimes if I want to. I see. I'll tell you what, I think I should probably call Mary and just let her know. No, 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 please, no, no, no. Oh. You silly little goose, you know that. <laughs> and Mary, it's Josh calling from the hospital. Um, no, no, I'm doing a much better, thank you. Listen, <laughs> I don't want you to get too nervous about this or anything, but uh, Mara is here with me right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think she... Uh, I guess she snuck out and uh, got herself a cab and got over here on her own. Listen, uh, I, I think uh, I think I'm going to keep her here with me for a little while. So don't worry about anything, okay? And I'll call you later on. All right, bye bye. All right, you little sneak. <sighs> what do we do now, huh? Now Marcy and I get under the covers. Uh, okay, well come on over, snuggle up. Let's go. You little sneak, I can't believe it. I gotta tell you something, though. My leg feels a lot better already. Oh, I missed you. What's this? An unauthorized visitor? This is my daughter, Mara. And uh, this is my, my nurse, Annie. She tells me what to do. Oh, I don't think anybody can tell your daddy what to do. <laughs> Where did you come from, Mara? My house. Daddy said I could stay. What's the matter with your doll? She broke her leg. Oh. Just like my daddy. Can I see? 
here. Oh. How would you like it if I set her leg like we set your daddy's leg? Yeah? Okay. I'll bring her back when I'm done. I know. When you come back, she'll go. Well, if you're so good at reading minds, Mr. Lewis, I guess I don't need to say anything out loud. Did you see those scandal sheets, H.B.? I started the fire with one of them. Oh, that's the best use for them. Well, it looks like uh, you've made peace with the Vanessa situation, too. Well, if it wasn't Matt, I, uh, I would have found it harder. But as I said to him, I never met a Ridden I didn't like. Maybe so. But uh, he doesn't seem to have achieved too much yet for the time he's been on Earth. Oh, well, he's young. Uh, what were you doing when you were his age? Mm. <laughs> Wildcatting. Not just for oil, either. Mm. Yes, I, uh, I knew quite a few women before I met Miss Martha. Oh, all right, all right. I met a few women after I <laughs> knew Miss Martha, too. But that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, can you remember what it was like to fall in love? Of course I can. I'll never be that old. <laughs> there was a day when... I would have walked through fire to get to my beloved. And I didn't care what anybody thought or said. <laughs> now, folks think when you get older, you get wiser, but I think you get a little more humble along the way. Enough so that you don't uh, want to judge people for their shortcomings and their needs, particularly since you've experienced them all yourself. Mm -hmm. I would like to propose a toast mm. to loves gone by. To loves gone by. So, can we put this whole sordid episode to rest? I want to. We live such complicated lives, you know. I mean, we, if we start doubting each other, it makes it so easy for people like Alexandra to get to us, and they cause a lot of damage. I mean, we just... We have to learn to trust each other. I mean, obviously, I trust you completely. And I trust you now, too. I can't tell you how much I missed you. You could. You could show me. I'm gonna take you out for the best dinner of your life. As soon as I put on my Sunday best. Sid, why don't we um, stay here? I can whip up something, maybe help you clean up this place a oh, bit. I would love that, but you know, I don't have no food. Okay, Jillian, what are you worried about? I just don't want people to give you a hard time. Hmm. That's only if I let them. First things first, gotta get some clothes. What? What is it? A pair of my boots are missing. Do you think the police took them? Maybe. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm checking the souls for gasoline. Well, then they won't find any. Listen, I think that we ought to go out and get some dinner. Mm, who could it be? Sid, great, man. I thought maybe you were gone. Listen, I gotta talk to you right now. Yeah, well, you know, hey, Julie man. and I were just about to go out for dinner. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, but this can't wait. Yeah, it's the police did it. Listen, Nick, what's, what's right. this about? You know, I think I came up with a profile of the man that did most of the things that you're being charged with, Sid. You see, I... I kept going over and over the state's case against you and put it together with what I already know. And for some reason, it just didn't make sense. I mean, things kept falling apart in the same places. Key points were missing, like uh, a motive. Wait, you didn't have one, right? Yeah, well, look, Nick, what, what's the use? Okay, look, look, just, just humor me, okay? I know that an arsonist doesn't need to have a motive. I mean, some of them like to start fires just to see them burn. Now, this guy could be that kind of guy, but 
You know, I couldn't help but feel as if there was a pattern starting to form with all the, the little stray facts and the coincidences, but I just couldn't put them together until tonight. Well, could we hear the profile? Sure. You know, Sid, at first glance, this guy sounds a lot like you. I mean, he's someone that lives in the hood. They could have left a long time ago, but decided to stay because he wanted to make a difference. He wanted to see things change around here. And, but his methods were different than yours. While you were out there making a name for yourself as a big-time lawyer, I mean, doing your bit, accepting your pro bono cases, this guy was staying closer to home. And all the while, he was running a one-man vigilante operation, incognito. You know, I think at first, he started small, you know, whenever he heard a, a gunshot go off or he saw that a, a crack house was being set up somewhere in the neighborhood, he called the police, he dialed 911. In fact, I think he dialed 911 so many times back in the summer that he became a real pain in the butt. But you know what happened? I think that he started to see that his efforts were all in vain. That the cops just never showed up. So he started to realize that maybe, maybe they didn't care. Maybe they had written the neighborhood off. So what this guy started to do, Sid, was he began to set up started to set off little beacons. Beacons? Yeah. You know, maybe he would torch a drug drop, you know, or maybe set up a little rubbish fire in the backyard of a crack house. And what I think what he was trying to do was he was trying to keep the heat on the dealers, okay? Keep them moving around, keep them from staying in the same place. And incidentally, also leading the police to a few new drug busts. But you see, that's where I got confused again, you know? I. I kept thinking, how did this guy know where to set these little beacons off? I mean, sure, he could have heard some information out in the hood, but he always seemed to be one step ahead of the word out in the street. And then it occurred to me that maybe this guy was not working alone. Maybe he had an informant, you know, somebody on the inside who was keeping him hip to what was going on out in the street. That's an interesting theory, Nick, but I'm afraid that's all it is. What do you think a guy like this would do if he got arrested, Sid? I mean, what do you think that he would do if he got charged with the lesser fires, but also he got charged with the big fire, which he did not do? I mean, what do you think he would do? Do you think that he would keep quiet and not defend himself? But why would anybody take that route? So do you understand why I'm confused by these questions? Do you have any answers for me, Sid? Here she is. And she feels much better now. Oh, but she looks just like Daddy. <laughs> With a pretty dress on, yeah. Sign it for shame, Daddy? <laughs> yeah. One pen. Thank you very and much. And one extra small hospital gown. What is that for? I just thought it'd be more comfortable for Mar to sleep in this rather than her clothes. Good night, you two. This is what I really love about winter. It gives you such a good excuse to snuggle. Who needs excuses? <laughs> I like the way you think, son. Oops. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're pretty cute, don't you? <laughs> mm, no, actually... You know, I've mostly been thinking about how much criticism we've gotten from everybody. I mean, it's so amazing. Why? It's not as if we did anything. We just... Just said we love each other, that's all. Well, I don't know. Henry and HB have been pretty cool. Yeah, they have, haven't they? Yeah. Hats off to them. <laughs> so what about that scuzzy newspaper? And I mean, all these people who don't even know us practically and just acting as though we've, we've been trying to offend their sensibilities or something. couldn't figure it out for a while. But you know now? 
Yep. You know what happened today? Three <clears throat> prominent stockholders came into the office and they were so irate. And they really read me the riot act about giving the company a bad image because I was with you. And I, you know, one thing led to another and then I found myself saying to Maud Graydon, Maud, you're just jealous. <laughs> What'd she do, sell her stock? No, you see, that's the beauty of it all. It's too valuable to sell. She just stood there. And she didn't say anything, because the poor old poop knew I was right. <laughs> <laughs> mm, you are something. <laughs> hey, you don't go to sports bars very often, do you? Uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I don't. But I can sure see that I've been missing a lot. So have I. I've never been in a real newspaper office before. Well, you sure as heck ain't gonna see the Bulls playing here. <laughs> there it is. I got it. We can leave now. You sure you just don't want to go out and get something to eat after all? It's much cozier on my <laughs> Does the idea make you feel uncomfortable? Um, no. Um, no, it doesn't at all. It's just that... You really don't know me very well. I mean, I could be a Republican or something. Oh, I'm a pretty good judge of character. I can tell you're a sweetheart. Uh, wrong answer. That's, that's the wrong answer. You see, what I really am is a curmudgeon. I drive people away. I make sure I'm all alone. And then I feel sorry for myself. Well, you won't feel sorry for yourself by tomorrow morning. I promise you that. kicking myself all over the place tomorrow morning, but could I take a rain check, please? I just remembered. I, I, I have a kid waiting for me at home. I forgot. I'll be in touch. I can't just make you leave alone in the middle of the night. You, know, you, you have to stay. But I think it would be it would be better if we don't share the same bedroom for a while. You, know? you mean you, you want me to uh, sleep in the guest bedroom? I think it would be best if we don't sleep together for a while. What's a while? I don't know. Maybe just tonight. I just I, I just want to wait. Like I said, till I feel better about that part. We can hardly keep our hands off each other. I know. And this, you, this is my problem. You understand that, but it's, it's nothing to do with you. That's okay with you, isn't it? Sure. We got all the time in the world. for you, Nick, is that I think you should stick with two reporting. Yeah, leave all the police work to the professionals because I do think you're jumping to all the wrong conclusions. No, I don't think so, Sid. Because it all came together for me tonight. The corporate suit and the Robin Hood of the Hood are both the same man. And the only reason why he's keeping quiet, Sid, is because he's protecting his source. Now, I'm not sure yet who this informant is, but even more baffling to me is that I don't understand why he is so important to you. 